Hello everyone, welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, we're going to be looking at another episode of Measure with Mensa. So over here, we're going to be solving sample questions related to Mensa and the effective solutions to these questions. So let's start off with today's set. Here's our first question. Now this is supposed to be a set of four figures. The bottom right figure is missing. You need to find out which of the following options is the missing square. Is it A, B, C, D, E, or D or E? So um, we have um, three diamonds. Each diamond has a black spot on it, which is present on a narrow vertex. Now, um, over here, we see that in the top left, it's uh, the black spot is oriented upwards. In the top right square, it's oriented towards the right. In the bottom left uh, square, the black spot is oriented towards the left. So, <clears throat> we can conclude from here that the spot is oriented towards the cardinal directions. North, east, west, south. So we've seen the point being, we've seen the black spot pointed north, east, and west. The only other cardinal direction that's left is south, and since it's on a narrow, so, since it's on the narrow end of the diamond, the diamond needs to be placed like this with the black spot at the bottom vertex, which is narrow. So therefore, this figure is present in square B. So therefore, square B turns out to be the missing square that's required to fill this particular figure. Now let's look at another figure question. Again, we have a figure here. We need to find out what's the missing square. Now, if you look at the top row, you can see that all horizontal lines are continued until the end of the figure. All vertical lines are also continued until the end of the figure. So as you can see, in the top row, in both of these squares, you can see that there are two horizontal lines. One is the perimeter and another is a few points from the perimeter. Both of them are present and they are continued across both the lines, I mean both the squares. So therefore, in order for this particular figure to be complete, in the bottom left square, you see that we have two uh, horizontal lines which need to be extended. And then we would need to complete the square by defining its perimeter. So therefore, the missing square has to look like option E. So square E turns out to be the right option. The reason being that if you place square E there, then you can see that all horizontal lines are connected from end to end. So therefore, that would correctly fit in with the pattern seen in the rest of the figure. So therefore, the missing square turns out to be square number E. Now, why is it that A is not a part of it or B? The other options are incorrect because either they do not have two, rec two horizontal lines or B, they do have a vertical line. Now, again, as you can see, between the top left and the bottom left squares, there are vertical lines which are continued from end to end. So they have to be uh, considered as well. And since on the right side, there is no vertical line in between the square, so therefore, we need to make sure that the option that we have does not have any. So the only options that would have been plausible were C and D. I mean C and E. And as you can see in C, there is no line at the top. So therefore, that makes it incorrect because it doesn't complete the figure. Now, let's look at a question on words. We have the words Senate, Banana, Mirage, Curate, Revoke. Which one of the f words below belongs with the words above? <clears throat> we have five options. Ginger, humane, abacus, yogurt, sector. 
Now, if you look at the top, now if you look at the words above, you can see that they all end in a vowel sound. Senate ends in E, banana ends in A, mirage ends in E, curate ends in E, revoke ends in E. So the common denominator, the common link between these words is that they end in vowels. And if you look at our options, you can see that ginger, humane, I mean, ginger, abacus, yogurt, as well as sector, all of these end in consonants. So therefore, humane is the only word that belongs with the words above. So if you were to rewrite the set, it should be senate, banana, mirage, curate, revoke, and humane. So humane is the right answer. Now let's look at the last question for today. We have five suspects and one of the whom is guilty. They are being interrogated by the police. Who is the culprit if just three only of the following statements are correct? So we have five suspects giving in their statements and the police are deducing that only one of them is guilty. We need to find out who is guilty based on the assumption that only three that only three statements among the thieves among the suspects are true now alf says that dave did it ben says that it wasn't me charlie says that ernie is innocent dave says that alf is lying when he accuses me ernie is saying that ben is telling the truth now how do we find out who is the culprit well in this kind of a question it's a good idea to consider all alternatives. In this case, that means since there's only one guilty party, we need to find we need to put in we need to put in the scenario which of the we need to put in the scenario that every person becomes a guilty person, and then we need to find out if the other statements corroborate that supposed ac accusation. Now, for example. In case one, let's consider that Alf is the culprit. Now, um, if Alfred, if Alf is the culprit, then Alf's statement that says Dave did it is wrong, which means Alf is a liar. However, the other statements, Ben saying it wasn't me, Charlie saying Annie is innocent, Ernie saying Ben's telling the truth and Dave saying Al flying when he accuses me are all actually true. So there are four true statements here. However, according to the question, only three statements can be true. So therefore, Alf being the culprit is not right. Now, what's about the second case? Let's consider Ben. If Ben is a culprit... then let's look at the statements which are wrong. Now the liars in this scenario will be Alf, Ben, and Ernie. Now why is that? Alf says that Dave did it, so he's using a wrong accusation. Ben is denying his involvement, and Ernie is confirming that. So all three of these are liars. Now that means there are only two true statements according to this, according to the question. However, we need three correct statements in the, in the scenario where you find the culprit. So again, the second possibility does not work. Now what about the third possibility? Charlie. Now, if we consider that Charlie is the culprit, then the only statement that works here as a lie is that of Alf's. Now, Alf says Dave did it, whereas Dave doesn't do it. So, therefore, again, we, if in Charlie being a culprit, you can see that four statements are true. So, Ben saying it wasn't me, Charlie saying Ernie is innocent, Alf lying, and as well as Ernie saying Ben telling the truth. All of these statements are true. So, again, st scenario number three is the same as scenario number one, so that does not work. Now, what about scenario number four? Let's consider Dave as the culprit. 
Now, when Dave is considered to be the culprit, then we can see that Dave is also a liar. Now, what is that? Now, Alf accuses Dave of co committing the crime. However, Dave says that Alf is lying when he accuses me. So, therefore, that means Dave's statement is incorrect. It's a lie. However, all other statements turn out to be true, whether it's Alf's, Ben's, Charlie's, or Ernie's. So, therefore, um, over here, we have four statements that are true, which, again, does not satisfy the condition of the question. Now, that means the only person who could have been the culprit in this particular scenario is Ernie. Now, let's consider if Ernie is the culprit. Now, Alf's statement saying that Dave did it is wrong. Ben's um, statement saying that it wasn't me is a true statement. Charlie's statement also turns out to be incorrect because Ernie is the culprit and he's not innocent. Dave's accusation that Alf is lying is again true. And Ernie's statement that Ben telling the truth is also true. So in statement, no, so in our fifth scenario, Ernie turns out to be the culprit and the liars in this scenario are Alf and Charlie. So we have two whose statements are incorrect, so therefore there are three true statements. And that's the exact condition that we need to find out. So according to the question, there is only one culprit when three of the following statements are correct. Now when Ernie is considered to be the culprit, Alf's and Charlie's statements are incorrect, the other statements are correct. So therefore, option 5 turns out to be the right option. So therefore, the culprit in this particular case is Ernie, and the, the statements that are correct are Ben's, Dave's, and Ernie's. So that concludes this episode of Measure with Mensa. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to Agile Rank Mate, your partner in education. If you want to get the latest updates from our channel, then please don't forget to hit the bell icon present below the video. So until the next episode, take care, stay alert, bye-bye for now.